All right, our next video here is to make one of my favorite toys that I remember when I was a kid into a digital version, and that was a Magic 8-Ball. Raise your hand if you have a Magic 8-Ball or have ever had a Magic 8-Ball at home. Yep, nope, just raise your hand. You don't need to talk out. Okay, you'll have time later. Just making sure I still got it. All right, let's go to our, our learning calendar. Here we have Magic 8-Ball. We're going to click on this and open it up. So while we're opening that up, you should already have MIT App Inventor open. Let's go to Projects, and let's go to Start New Project, and we're going to make it Magic 8 All. And don't forget to put your name on there. Okay, it should update a new one. And what we should do right away, too, is let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to refresh because I have mine open from before. I'm going to go to Connect. AI companion, and I'm going to connect with QR. Remember, if you don't have a tablet at home, no big deal. As long as you follow along, you should be able to see. And I also try to put my app up here on my tablet all the time so you can see what it looks like. So let's see where our visualizer is. There it is. So we're good to go. Okay. Now, Magic 8 Ball. There's going to be some different things that we have to do, but really we're going to learn how to use the editor and blocks and do some AI companion stuff with our device, accelerometers, buttons and players, stuff we've already done. And then the new stuff we're going to do is making a list and responding to that event. That's kind of the new stuff here, stuff that we'll get into with PLTW as well later. So first we have to be able to set up our, our device, which we already have. And we have to be able to click the sounds. So we're going to go into this App Inventor Media Library. So make sure you click on that. And we're going to go down here to Magic 8-Ball. And let's just go ahead and download all these onto our device. So remember, you right-click, save link as, cha-ching sound. Right-click, save link as, clinking teaspoon sound. Right-click, Save link as, ta-da sound, ta-da. Right click, save link as, magic eight ball image. And the one we're gonna probably use out of the two is the blank magic eight ball image. So make sure you have those all downloaded on your computer. And then what we're going to do right away before we go on to anything else is go into App Inventor and upload all those files. So, I know there are a couple that started with a C, so i got to find those. The clinking teaspoon, that's what it sounds like. We're going to upload, what was the other sound here? i got to find it. The Magic 8-Ball image. I'll upload that. Hit OK. Upload. There's another one there in the M's. Magic 8-Ball blank. That one we'll use for sure. Let's see. What do I have here? I'm looking for the Tada one as well. Ta-da. What's it sound like? Okay, there's that one. And a missing one. I have the clinking teaspoon cha-ching sound. I am looking for the cha-ching sound. I gotta add that one. Yeah, there's one missing. So I'll go in here to the C's. Cha-ching. <coughs> we'll put that in there and we're all good. So we have all our files. Here we go. Let's click back. So part one, click a button, hear a sound. The final Magic 8-Ball app will deliver a prediction from the, la from the list that you've designed. So we're going to get started. First, we're going to make a button with a picture on it and program it to play a sound when the button is clicked. So to open App Inventor, we already have that open. Um, we're we're going to make sure that we have all our stuff set up here. We're going to download the images, which we did, download the files, and on the left column of the designer, we're going to drag a button over. Okay. Then we're going to click on that button, 
and we're going to add an image. The image it's going to want us to add on here, we'll find out in a second. So let's go ahead and put a button here. And let's rename this 8 ball button. 8 ball button. Now, what it wants us to do in the text is it's going to want us to add some or get rid of the text. So we have to go here down here in text and get rid of the text click off it now our button is just blank now that it's blank it's time for us to put the file in and we're going to want to um let's see i think i lost myself here we go set the eight ball image on onto the button as well okay so we're going to want to use the blank image so we're going to go here and now that we're still clicked on eight ball button we're going to go to image and we're going to use 8-Ball Image. I think it's Magic 8-Ball JPEG. It okay. Yep, that's the one we wanted. Good. Now, now that we have that, what I want us to do is I want us to make the width fill parent, just so we have that naturally, the full width. And the height, we're going to make that 90 pixel, or sorry, 90%. And that should fill it. Now, why do I do that? It's going to look a little um, spread out there, but at least it fills our tab, our app, and that's what I was kind of looking for. Okay, let's keep moving. Uh, from the media palette, we're going to drag a player um, onto the screen. And remember, the player is going to disappear. We're going to select the player so that it plays one of the sounds. So under the source link in the box, we're going to change none and we're going to upload the file. And I think we can choose whichever sound we want. So we're going to use one of those sounds. You can pick which one you want. I'll show you which one I'm going to do. So I'm going to go to media. I'm going to drag player right on there. And now it's just gone. Nope, it's under non-visible components. And we're going to pick the source. Let's use the ta-da button. I like the ta-da one. You can use whatever one you want. I'm going to use the da. I like it. Great. Now, it's time for us to go into the blocks. So let's go up to App Inventor. Let's open blocks. There's our blank canvas. How beautiful. You're going to tell your app uh, how to behave when we have the button clicked. So this is actually very simple in the App Inventor code because the programming is going to be just two blocks. Once the block editor is open, there's several options for running it in the palette and the drawers. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to screens. We're going to pick that button. We called it eight ball button or something like that. We're going to grab the dot click and then we're going to drag the player one dot play inside of it. So eight ball button, when you click it, it's going to play a sound and we want it to be able to start when we play that sound. So that's real simple, isn't it? Real easy coding. It should look like this, which ours does. So we're gonna test it. Let's see how it works. Perfect. So when we click on the eight ball, it says ta-da. Nice and simple. All right, so now we're on to part two. We're gonna click the button, we're gonna get a prediction, and we're gonna hear a different sound, okay? So now that we've gotten the button to perform, um, to play the sound, we want to extend the action into giving the user prediction. So we're going to need two labels. We're going to need label one and label two. So what we're going to do is we're going to start dealing with something we haven't dealt with yet. Okay. So we're going to make our, we're going to go back here. And now that we are going to be adding other things, I want us to do, go to the eight ball button. Okay. And we're just going to change it to automatic again, the height and the width so that we have space. Okay. Everything should be automatic. And now what I want us to do is I want us to grab a vertical arrangement. We haven't done anything with vertical arrangements yet. And these arrangements are nice because they help to make your screen look good. Oh, potential spam. That's interesting. So we're going to go up here to layout. And it wants us to use a vertical arrangement. So we're just going to drop that vertical arrangement right underneath our Magic 8-Ball. Let's make this a tablet size. 
Okay. Then from the user interface, we're going to dra drag a label component one, and we're going to drag another uh, label component one. We're going to drop it inside the vertical arrangement, and we're going to change the text to say, ask the magic eight ball a question. I think we can do that pretty easily. So again, it said pick a label and drag it inside this box, just like that. And we're going to change the text to say, ask the magic eight ball a question. So I'm going to be lazy and I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste it in the box. An exclamation point. Ask the magic eight ball a question. Okay. That seems to work. I like that. What does it look like on our tablet? Looks like that. It says ask the magic eight ball a question. So everything seems to be working the way we want it to. Good. From the user interface, we're going to drag over another label. We're going to put it in the vertical arrangement just under it. And this one's going to say touch the magic eight ball to receive your answer. All right. Then we're going to drag the button so that it's inside the vertical arrangement. So let's go ahead and do that again. Another label right underneath it. I'm going to copy and paste again. Touch the magic eight ball to receive your answer. Control C. Change the label there. Control V. And now I just re realized I think we're using the wrong magic eight button. That's no problem. We're going to click on 8-Ball button. We're going to click back here and do image 8-Ball.jpg. There we go. There we go. Now it's looking right. Let's see. Yep, now it's looking right. So um, I just had the wrong one. I apologize. We got it fixed. So now we dragged um, our, our information inside the vertical arrangement component. Then it wants us to drag button one so that it's also inside the vertical arrangement component at the top of the two labels. This will cause everything to line up nice and neatly. Now this can be a little tricky, so watch as I do it. I'm gonna grab this eight ball and I'm gonna drag it inside the box. Now you have to look carefully because as you can see, there's a blue line showing there. If I let go, that blue line put me right above it. Okay, but now everything is lined up nice and neatly. Everything should be working good. Okay. Nice. Now let's go into the blocks and see what we have to change. Here's the blocks. Now what it wants us to do is um, from the blocks palette, we're going to click label two. Okay. And we'll see that it's a down here label two. And we're going to be looking for set label two background color. And just above the, we're going to put it just above the player one inside the block. But then once we have, we pick background color, we're going to drop down the, the menu and we're just going to look for text. So really what I'm trying to show you here, what they're trying to show you here is you could pick any of these. I'm actually going to pick this one. Why not? I'm going to put it right above it. It says has margins. Doesn't matter. I'm just going to change it to text. Now again, it has that red square or red X. Why? We don't have anything on the end yet, which we'll get in just a second. So now from here, we're going we're gonna to go to the built-in drawer. We're going to go to lists. This will be exciting. We're going to pick a random item. We're going to make a random list. So we're going to pick a random item list, and we're going to set it in that box. This is when it gets fun. Pick a random item. Here it is. We'll put it in the box. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start creating a list. So from the built-in drawer, uh, uh, click lists again, and we're going to make a list, and we're going to um, we're going to pick random items to put in that block. So this is what it's going to look like when we do make a list. We're going to drop it inside the box, and we're going to drag out all these empty blocks to put in there. So here's how it works. We're going to go to items, and we're going to go make a list, and put it in there. And then from here, we're going to take the text box and we're going to put it in here. This is called index one. The reason why it's index one, it's the first one. Do you know what the next one is called? Good. I'm glad you called that out. Index two. Thank you for you for raising your hand. So we'll click that in. 
All right, so from there now, we're going to just make sure we add the blocks. So this is just a list that we're going to create, and we have index 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Well, if we look here, we only have two indexes. How do we add more? Click on the gear and drag an item here. So that's 3, 4, 5, 6, go away, 7, and I'll just slide this one right in here, 8. Now as far as these, we can control C and control V, click it in there, click it in there, click it in there, click it in there. If you want to pause the video and come back after you've done this, you can. All right, now you're going to go to the Magic 8-Ball, and this is where you can copy or follow along with me. We're going to put all these things in our blocks. So index one is going to be it is certain. Again, you can pause the video and then fast forward to when we're done with this if you want. First one is going to say it is certain. That is one choice. Okay, index two is going to say without a doubt. Okay, the third one is say as I see it, yes. As I see it, yes. Next one, ask again later. I hate that one. Later. Next one will say, reply hazy. Try again. That's another lazy one. Try again. Uh, don't count on it. Next one after that is my sources say no. Then it says Outlook, not so good. Now, if you want to add more, you know how. You can always go to this link on our directions to get more information of all these different phrases you can say down here. But I think we're good with this. Eight's fine. Okay? So we've got the Magic 8-Ball app. Now it's time to test it and make sure that it works. So we're going to click on it. And if it says, as the directions say, ask the Magic 8-Ball a question, click on it. It made a ta-da sound. And what does it say down here? Ask again later. Ask again later. My sources say no. So they're random. They're going to pop up different ones without a doubt. Okay. If we don't like that sound, oh, I can't stand that ta-da sound. I can go in here again, remember, and go to the player, and I can change it to the cha-ching sound just like that. And now I can test it. Outlook, not so good. That's like I'm opening up my wallet. Again, ask later. It's making the sound. Okay. Cool. So now we're on to part three. We're going to shake the phone and get a prediction, and then we're going to hear a sound. So even though we have it working right, there's a way to make it even more fun. We're going to use an accelerometer component to make the phone respond to shaking instead of responding to the click. We can shake our devices. This will make the app much more like a real eight ball. If you've ever used the eight ball, you shake it. Something in this watery bubble finally comes up, and it's never what you're hoping it's going to be. So in the designer part, let's go to sensors and drag an accelerometer. So I'm in designers. I go to sensors, and I'm going to drag an accelerometer onto the screen. Again, it shows up at the bottom because it's a non-visible component. Now, in the blocks, we're going to go to the palette, and we're going to grab the accelerometer when shaking. Blocks, accelerometer, when shaking. I'll just drop that one right under here. We can move this up. There we go. Now, disconnect all the blocks from inside when button one dot click and move them to inside the accelerometer. We can move the whole thing. I'll show you how. So we can take all this stuff inside here, and as long as we click on it and drag, it's going to go out here. So basically what we did is we got rid of the 8-ball. 
now when I click, nothing happens. Okay? If you're like, but I really want that to still happen, we can click on these pieces and we can still have it show up in there. Remember, you have to have these things in the right order. And we can call it to play here. Now, we're going to be adding some other things here in a second. Let's say we want to have a different sound when we're going to do the accelerometer part. We can add a different player as well. So let's do that. Let's go to media. Let's add a second player. And with this player, let's give a different sound. Let's do the clinking teaspoons. Okay. So we can do that with the accelerometer. It'll play a different sound. Clinking teaspoons. All right. So now we have two different things. So um, what we're going to do with this one, too, is we can set it up to have um, the different Magic 8-Ball as well. So we're going to have two different Magic 8-Balls for this. Okay. Accelerometer shaking. You could do two different things. But to keep it simple, we're just going to... We'll just, we'll just stick with what the directions are here. We'll just delete this. But keep that there in case you want to move it around. So now let's test it. Let's see what happens when we shake it. So when I shake it, it made a different sound, and it says it is certain. Without a doubt. Ask again later. So that's working exactly how we want it to. That's all successful. I like that. Now... Um, are the challenges. We can make, make the Magic 8-Ball speak. So instead of an addition, you can make a prediction to make it appear as a text. So you can make, ask the Magic 8-Ball to speak loud, and you can use what you learned in text-to-speech, what you learned in um, Talk to Me, and you can put that in there. So if you want to try that, go ahead. We did all that stuff in Talk to Me. You could put that in there. So when it shakes, it reads the Talk to You instead, and you can give it a whole bunch of different... You can use the list for that as well. But let's say we wanted to have two different eight balls now that we know how to create this. And we have the one that, um, let's put this list up here as well. Okay, we'll copy and paste that like we had before. But for magic, ooh, we're going to have player one here. And then for player two, we're going to have that as the accelerometer. There we go. So let's say we wanted to have a different label and a different accelerometer work for the different uh, eight balls. So let's say we wanted to have another vertical arrangement. We can do that. So we can have both magic eight balls on here. So we're just going to copy everything the exact same way. So we have our vertical arrangement. We're going to drag our button into our vertical arrangement. Remember, get rid of the text. And this one, we're going to use the other image. Okay, and we can add two labels down at the bottom, just like we have with the other one. Um, but for now, I have to, to make it work. I'm going to go to screen and do it as scrollable. You may have to do that as well. It just allows us to scroll down. So we're going to need two more labels. So let's drag a label in here, and we're going to steal the same wording that we have as, as ask the Magic 8-Ball a question. I'm going to copy put that down here in this one. I'm going to paste it. So it's the same question. Ask the Magic 8-Ball a question. And then I'm going to add another label right below it. Keep it inside that box. And this one is going to say, it said, touch the Magic 8-Ball to receive your answer. So I'm going to copy that. Scroll down here and I'm going to paste it in here. But instead, instead of touch, it's going to be shake your device. Oops. Shake your device to ask. To ask the magic eight ball. Or sorry, shake your device. To receive, just do that. Take your device. I'm just getting excited because I'm trying to show you different things. To receive your answer. So it, it can show up in two different places now. 
Now, here's the important thing, though. Now that we have this all set up, you have to be able to have them work from different labels. So label two works with this Magic 8 ball because that's label two. What are we going to have to change the accelerometer label here for? This one we have to look carefully, and it's right where we had it. Shake the receiver. Which label is that? Label four. So here's where having the different labels can get confusing. So to help me, I'm going to rename label four as shake label. And label two is going to be click label. Again, it's just so that I can read these things carefully on the blocks side. If we look here, they've both been changed to click label. This should make it a little simpler for us to see that we want to choose shake label. Okay, now let me show you. We have, we'll zoom in here at the camera. This is the touch label or button label, or what did I call it? Click label. It is certain without a doubt. Now for the other Magic 8 Ball, right now it says shake your device. So if I shake it, my sources say no, without a doubt. So we've basically done like two different Magic 8 Ball apps in one by doing all this. Now it seems a little over the place, but I wanted to kind of show you these cool things. So again, if you want to try it out and try to add the text to speech part by looking back at your um, talk to me and see how it works, you can do that. And again, let me show you a real quick way that you can go back and forth. Go to My Projects, go to My Projects, and here's Talk to Me. You can double click on it and it'll open it up. Let's say you have blocks in here that you think would be helpful for you for the other one. You can click on this box where it has the text box dot text. You could drag it in here and then you can save it there. Now, why is that important? Because then you can go back to my projects. Let's say you want to go to Magic 8-Ball. And while you're in here, click in the backpack. And, oops, that's the wrong one. Let's actually delete this one so it's not so. Remove from backpack. Remove from backpack. We can then take this and we can drag it in here if we think there's parts that we can use. If not, just delete it. Okay, so this is all we're looking for. This is all I wanted to create. If you want to try the other things, you certainly can. But this one had a little extra work um, to help you learn a couple new things. That ends all your at-home tutorial apps that we were going to do here at the beginning of the corner. So don't forget to email this uh, final file in to me with some sort of nice comment or a chuck fact. And that's it. Bye.